Hi there, thanks so much for tuning in today. So today I'm gonna to talk about flow resistant straws and their practical use in the voice studio. So if you're someone who struggles with a throat that feels constricted, with vocal fatigue, with muscle tension dysphonia, um, with a general feeling that your instrument is working much harder than you'd like it to have to work to make the sounds that you want to make, then these exercises are ideal for you. So essentially, with the flow resistance straws, all we're doing, my straw fell off the deck. Be right back. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna phonate or make sound into the straw. Now the smaller the diameter, the better, but if you don't have a straw handy right now, what you can do is you can remove the ink cartridge out of the cylinder of a pen, or as one of my students did the other week, thank you Matt for this idea, you can use dry penne pasta. It doesn't have quite the same benefit if it's a really large diameter, but you can start with that and then if you're able to get something smaller. Um, my kids actually used my smaller diameter straws in arts and crafts. And so I found this from a juice box. <laughs> so we're gonna use this today. All right, so essentially all you're gonna be doing is you can sing glides and scales and even vocal phrases. Well, you're gonna basically sound like you're singing a little bit of an ooh. All right, lipstick. All right, so it feels a little bit interesting initially at first. And the reason why we're gonna do this is because when we're phoning the straw, it actually helps to sort of reshape the vocal folds for more efficient vibration. And that really small mouth opening that we have when the straw is between our lips creates a back pressure inside the vocal tract. And this is really where the benefits of this exercise lie. Because that back pressure means that the pressure differential between the spaces above and below the vocal folds is minimized. And that in turn helps the vocal folds to operate much more efficiently. So essentially what's happening when we phonate through the straw is we're encouraging more efficiency of the vocal folds. We're sort of squaring them up and making it easier for them to vibrate. So there's essentially a push-pull effect between the supraglottal vocal spaces, that is the spaces above the vocal folds, so mostly the pharynx and the mouth, and the spaces below the vocal folds, the subglottal spaces. And this helps to create what we call an inertive reactance, an energy efficiency loop between the vocal folds and the rest of the vocal tract. So the vocal fold vibration feeds acoustic energy into the supraglottal spaces, into that vocal tract, and that vocal tract in turn feeds acoustic energy back to the vocal folds to help sustain their vibration, their efficient vibration. Now, if you'd like to challenge yourself further, you can take the straw and stick it into a glass of water and sing your scales, your glissandos. Splashing myself feel a little bit like a kid sort of blowing into a milkshake or something to that effect. All right. Now I'm all wet. All right. Just in time for church. Okay. So this again will encourage a greater efficiency of the vocal tract. So one of the things that you want to do is make sure that there's no air passing through the nasal cavity. So as you're phoning through the straw, you can just pinch your nose if that helps just to make sure. One of the things that I like to do is phonate into the straw, and while I'm still phonating, remove the straw. And that essentially just helps me, it encourages my vocal tract to maintain that same efficiency as I had when the straw was between my lips. Now, another thing to watch out for is an over tensing of the facial muscles. You want to make sure that you form a tight enough seal around the straw so that there's no air leaking out through here. 
but you don't want to be tensing the facial muscles excessively. And when we remove the straw, the vocal folds are already set up for a much more efficient production. And one of the other things that you might notice as well when you're phonating through a straw is that sometimes you'll get little breaks in the voice, little skips, little hiccups as you're phonating on your glissandos or your scales that might not otherwise be there when you have your mouth more open. And that's simply because the resonance is a little bit different when you have this tiny mouth opening. That essentially reshapes the vocal tract a little bit and you will get used to it. And phonating through the straw can help us to find the right balance between tension and breath, between glottal resistance efforts and airflow so that we can have what we call flow phonation. That is a really healthy and efficient means of producing our sound. So again, flow resistant straws are often used in speech therapy to help speakers work through the issues that they have with vocal hyperfunction, muscle tension dysphonia, and vocal fatigue. And this can also help singers who are dealing with issues with constriction and excessive muscular effort, especially at the glottal level. So please let me know how you do with it, experiment with it. It may take a little bit of time, but I would encourage you to try this several times a day. Warm up using the straw. Uh, if you commute to and from work, keep a straw in your vehicle so that you can use that time wisely to continue to help your instrument develop. And if you're interested in... And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the science behind straw phonation, Ingo Tietze and his daughter Karen Tietze Cox have a series of videos out that explain the science a little bit more. And what I'll do is include the links to that video series in the description box below here, so you can check it out after this. In the meantime, please take a moment to like this video and also subscribe to this channel so that you'll receive notifications every time I post new videos. Thanks for watching.